Good morning, Word Warriors. It is so good to be in your room today, right now, with you. I'm there. Do you know, we've been talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And so, last week, I told you about the gift of knowledge. The gift of knowledge is when God reveals something to you, maybe, about someone else's past or present. Something that nobody else would know. But when you reveal that and you speak to them about it, it's almost like they know that they know God knows them and personally, and he cares about them. It can do tremendous, have tremendous benefit in the kingdom. Well, the one we're doing today now is a word of wisdom. You know, this is like God taking a teeny tiny piece of his wisdom and saying, I'm going to give this to you. And it's going to show you something about your future or someone else's future. And, and it's, I mean, it's just an amazing thing to happen. For those of you who uh, have been with me on this, you know that every prophet in the Bible operated in this gift, every one of them. They knew what the future would be. And the interesting thing is they didn't have the Spirit of God in them. The Spirit of God came on them for a time because the Spirit didn't come until Jesus went to heaven. And so we have this gap in there. But in the Old Testament, he would come and he would dwell and come and minister through a, a prophet. So this gift just really unveils the purposes of God on this earth. If you have followed me for very long, you've heard this story. So just turn the volume down. Just think how good I look today. You don't have to listen to the words until I get done with the story. I guess I could wave at you when I'm done. But it is a perfect, perfect example of a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom weaving together. And so it's a story. It's a personal story. But years ago, when Jerry and I first got married, we couldn't decide on what church to go to. I didn't like any of them. We went from church to church to church to church to church. And he had come out of a General Baptist uh, Pentecostal background. I certainly had not. I'd come out of a Methodist background. And we just didn't do stuff like, you know, I mean, we, we just didn't do anything Pentecostal or what I would have called Pentecostal. And so, on the way to church, the reason I was dissatisfied wasn't with churches, it was with me. I wasn't where I needed to be spiritually, and I, I didn't know what to do. So, on the way to church that night, it was raining, Jerry was driving. I didn't talk to Jerry, I talked to God. And basically, what I said is, I've lost my joy. If you can't give it back, I'm kind of not interested anymore. Because if this is all there is to go to church, just go to church, go through the motions. I don't want this. That's not what I want in life. And didn't think any more about it. Got in the building. And oh, it! I tell you, we went to Gary Klein's church in a little blue trailer at the time. And that place was rocking. I mean, the music, it was just wonderful. I was having the best time. And then he said, I was towards the back. And then he said, stops dead in his tracks and says somebody in here uh, told God on the way over here that you've lost your joy and and you want it back and I'm telling you right now I couldn't breathe I had hold of the back of the pew and you couldn't have pried my hands loose if you tried uh, we go for that stuff you know no. and Jerry leans over and whispers to me he said you know he's talking about you I said quit looking at me why would you say that? He said, Melissa, there's one spirit. And the spirit is speaking to Brother Gary. And he's speaking to me. And I know it's you. And I said, does the spirit, he's telling stuff he shouldn't be telling. Well, I didn't go. But that was the word of knowledge. He knew what was going on. He, he, he revealed what I was speaking. But the next part was what interested me. I didn't go, and he, he get, you know how they give an altar call two or three times. I know you're out there. Uh, and so, finally, he said, God wants me to tell you one more thing. 
if you come forward, he will re he will renew your joy, but he will also make you an anointed teacher of the word of God. I don't know what happened next. All I know is I was at the altar bawling like a baby and God gave me more joy than I've ever had. I still got the joy of the Lord in me and that's been years ago. I thought how neat that was. That was a word of wisdom, something to come. God hadn't revealed that to me or to anybody else that I was going to be an anointed teacher of the word of God. You know, Satan has a counterfeit for everything. These people that claim that they can tell your future, uh, -uh. if the church was moving in the re in the revelation gifts of the spirit, which would be word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits, you wouldn't have a need for witches and fortune tellers and crystal ball gazers and Ouija boards and tea leaves. Those things are from Satan, straight from hell. We're engulfed in black magic. Go over to Barnes & Noble and you will see they have a huge section of New Age. Everything is New Age. That means it's not lining up with the Word of God, I can tell you. But in, the, in this country we live in, we see a lot of black magic. And it's not a good thing. You know, the Bible has always worked through the gifts of the Spirit. And I like the way uh, in Genesis, God said, it's being chapter 6, God said, I've just, Noah, I'm going to destroy this all the living creatures. And I'm going to wipe them out along with the earth. That was a word of wisdom. This is going to happen, Noah. Get ready. Daniel. Daniel had visions of, of empires just leaping into existence. And those empires, uh, he likened them to certain animals that would have their nature, like uh, lions and bears and leopards and beasts. And he was correct. And then in Joel, do you remember what God said in Joel? In chapter 2, it says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. All of those things. You know, Paul almost lost, lost his life in the hands of an angry mob. But God spoke a word of wisdom to him. In Acts 23, it says, That night the Lord appeared to Paul, and he said, Be encouraged, Paul. Just as you've been a witness to me here in Jerusalem, you must preach the good news in Rome as well. When he heard that, he knew, I'm going to be fine. He's sending me to Rome. What a neat thing that is. And then in another place, Paul was uh, in Corinth, and his life was being threatened again. And then in Acts 18, it says, One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. He said, Don't be afraid. Speak out. Don't be silent. For I'm with you, and no one will attack or harm you. For many in this city belong to me. So Paul stayed there for the next year and a half teaching the word of God. God gives these gifts in so many ways and it can show up in a lot of different ways. Joseph had dreams and he interpreted a dream of the future. Uh, Ezekiel caught up in the spirit and God gave him revelation. Daniel had wisdom by a night vision. Paul was caught up in the third heaven. So God's not tied in a box. He can work a lot of different ways. But the bottom line is this. Word of knowledge is a revelation of something that's happened before that nobody knows about except the, except the Lord, and he'll reveal that. Or it could be something in the future, and that's a word of wisdom. So I hope you enjoyed the teaching today. Let's pray. Father, we want to grow in the gifts of the Spirit. We want you to show us and teach us what they mean. So when we get in the Bible, we're not ignorant, Lord, of those things. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, guys. See you next week.